from Woli Shebioba in Niger Shebioma in Nigeria is a shepherd for over 30 years. So he's talking from experience. Um, I thought Sister Vivian raised her hand one minute ago and she, uh, I don't understand what he's saying. So are you going to interpret for us? Yes, I was just trying to do that. Um, okay. There was a bit of English and Yoruba. What he's saying in essence is that Anyone who is called of God and your call is certain on solid on the rock of Christ, there will be challenges in marriage. And it's a fundamental problem. It's not something that started yesterday or today. It's something that has been from foundation in the sense that because if your marriage is a happy one, if your home is a happy one, then your ministry would flourish easily. So the devil will use either your male, your partner, either husband or wife, to torment you, to frustrate you. And that as far as our father is concerned, the way forward is one to always be in spirit, you know, and be prayerful. In spirit means in the sense that one has to be sensitive, you know, to the lies and the tricks of the devil. The devil will always come. But when you are in sensitive and you can pick up, ah, definitely this is not my wife, something is wrong somewhere. Why is my husband being so angry? I need to be careful, you know, you're able to watch, then you'll be able to handle and deal with this problem. And I it's, it's, also said it's not something that's going to stop now. It's something that's always going to be there. But as Christians, we need to be watchful in the word of God and we need to be um, persistent so that whatever challenges come in our marriage, it does not end up in divorce. That's what he said in summary. I believe I didn't miss anything. Uh, my brother, uh, Glorious Paul, do you want to come in, sir? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, in, the only thing that I can say, because um, when I was listening to the voice, uh, the man of God has said a lot. And mm. I think during the time that we are talking, I try to portray something like that. Um, you know, the going through all those uh, challenges as a prophet or prophetess, it's, it's a something that... Nigeria and network. Gloria Paul, we can't hear you anymore. Okay, I'm going to mute you for now and uh, give my guest the forum and I'll come back to you when the network is better. Okay. Thank you so much for joining the grace. Prophetess. The grace of Thank God. Like you, you know what I told you, what I said when okay, we were before the, the program. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Is the network gone again now? Okay, uh, my prophetess, uh, we have on the program tonight, Prophet Stoi Ayuba. She's beautiful, she's gifted, she's on fire for the Lord. And being a prophet for so many years, she's seen a lot, she's heard a lot, and she's going to be taking us through that journey tonight by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I know the Lord will speak through you, ma. You have the floor. Yeah, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, I thank you so much for um, inviting me on your platform, on your ministry. You're and I pray that the Holy Spirit of the Lord will continue to guide and direct you. Amen. I also thank God for giving me the grace to be able to make it. For a few minutes, I thought I wouldn't be able to make it because of work, but I thank God for his grace. And I pray that by the special grace of God, uh, whatever I'll say will have a positive impact on everyone, including my, myself that is delivering Amen. the message in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, the, prophet, uh, the prophetic office, how it affects marriage. It's a big issue, a big, big, big issue. Um, I've had grace to hear so many people, mm. you know, discuss about this. Uh, but first of all, I would like to say that the prophetic office is ordained by God, mm -hmm. just as the marriage institution as well is ordained by God. So we have two institutions that is ordained by God. Mm. As a prophet or prophetess or visionary, you know that um, it's not an office you say, oh, I want to be a prophet. It is ordained by God. God is the only one that has the autonomy to give you his Holy Spirit. And he can decide to give anybody regardless of status. In fact, if we look at the first prophets and you know that met at um, in Acts 2 in Antioch where they were first called Christians, you see that most of them did not really have, you know, status like that in terms of economic power. Mm. Some were fishermen, you know, from different walks of life, apart from Saul that was converted. Mm. So it is a full-time job on its own to be a prophet. And you have some people that are juggling it with work. And that even makes it more demanding. So, Isaiah 61, could you read it for me just from verse 1 to 6? Have you got your Bible there, sis? Otherwise, I'll do that. It's very important for us to understand the office of the prophet, because uh, we trivialize it as um, people that just uh, give messages to God. But it's a special calling that needs, that is very sensitive. It's a sensitive office, more sensitive than all the jobs we have in the secular world. So in order to emphasize that or reiterate that, I'll read Isaiah 61. You want me to read from verse one? Yes. Yes. The yes. spirit of the Lord, the sovereign Lord is on me. Yes. Because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. That's verse one. Yes. Stop there, my sister. Stop there, my sister. God bless you. So I looked at that first verse and um, I see that in order for us to understand the office of the prophet, that first verse means a lot, that it is an instruction for God, from God. It's a mandate that you have to proclaim, you have to do his work. We are fishers of men, all prophets and prophetess and visionaries. Mm. To proclaim, to comfort, which means that at any point in time, even when your fellow prophet or prophetess is in trouble, it is your duty 
to lean, to, to, to have a show, to give a shoulder to lean on, to inquire of God. What is the way forward? What can be done? Mm. And so the office of the prophet is, it, it, it's very demanded emotionally, financially, psychologically, in all ramification, it's a demanding job that cannot be trivialized at all. Mm. Because you have to be in the right frame of mind to hear from God and to speak the mind of God. At the same time, it means that randomly you can be called if care is not taken, you don't have your own time. Mm. Because as we know, every time is God's time. Us being alive, us be given the gift to do his work is an honor, is mm. from God. So for you to have the um, time to give to your marriage, you have to ask God. As he said, ask and you shall be given. You have to ask for the grace. Because our God, I was ministering the other day and I said, and I quoted Genesis, that our God is a jealous God, which means that he can be very demanding. Hmm. But at the same time, it is God that has ordained this institution of marriage. It is legitimate. So, in marriage also, you have to give your time. Mm. And that is where it usually overlaps. That is where it affects. Because if you, as a wife, you know, you expect and you've made plans with your husband, who is a prophet, for instance, plans that affect your children, plans that affect your future, plans that affect both families, it could be a family engagement. It could even be a hospital appointment. And when the demand of, the, of your office as a prophet also means that, you know, there's a matter of life and death and they are saying that, please, you have to come. You have to come and pray. So, so and so person in church or in a place is asking specifically for you that you have to be part of that prayer. You have to help with this delivery, delivery, uh, deliverance service or prayer. So we like it or not, there's always that overlapping. And it takes the grace of God to be able to make the right decision at all times. Because nine out of 10 times as the office of a prophet, your, your time is God's time. Mm -hmm. No matter how well you've planned it, things happen. So how does it affect your marriage? It is first of all, by having an understanding partner, but sometimes that understanding can be tested. And so, as we've been told in the scripture, you pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. Everything you have to place in God's hands. Because if care is not taken, you will not have time for your own welfare and the welfare of your family. Because you are constantly on the move. You are constantly, even while you are home, you might not be home because people are calling you on the phone and you have to give your time as well. So you have to pray. That's my, my first, you know, submission on the topic is that prayer, prayer is the master key. You have to pray that God teach me. He that does not have wisdom has to pray for wisdom as James made us to understand. We have to pray. When God, when that song says, cast your burden onto Jesus for he cares for you. So it is a burden, 
But because it's the burden put on us by God, we have to cast it to God to help us. So that at all times, you are able to make the right decision to juggle your home and your office as a prophet. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it is not an impossible task. It is not impossible. We have to pray and pray as a couple and pray regularly, pray without ceasing. That's the only way forward because the devil is always, you know, coming with his wiles, looking for who to devour. He's always roaming up and down, roaming amongst the ch children of God. So there's no way around it that to keep on that the Lord should build a hedge around your family. And you cannot do it by your own wisdom. The prophet of the, um, uh, the office of the prophet affects finance because some prophets have no other job. They are full-time hmm. prophets. And sometimes the spirit, even when they are giving honorarium, if the spirit of the Lord says, do not accept it, in spite of your financial situation, you can't accept it because it means you are disobeying God. And once you disobey God, you are not doing God's work. It means you are working for yourself. There's a very thin line. So in that instance, when that happens, it will tell on your marriage hmm. because we know that finance is one of the major things that affects um, the, the marriage because there's no way there are bills to be paid at all times. There's family obligation. If you have children, there's obligation for your children. And if it's one-sided, for instance, if the man is a prophet, and if he's one-sided and he's a woman that is, you know, usually have to cover up, it can be tiring. Mm. So it takes the grace of God. So as a prophet, if you're in full time, you know, or, or, or practicing as a pro prophet, and is your wife, for instance, that is footing most of the bill, you have to create time for your wife. It will affect the marriage. And how would you do this? It's by looking for ways to pamper her, make her feel important, make her feel loved, make her feel like your queen. Because psychologically, if the woman feels you know, honored. Remember, in Genesis, the Lord created the woman to support. He didn't say she was a slave, to support. Mm. So if that's the case, as much as she pays the supporting role, the husband also, who is a prophet, for instance, the scenario we're building, has to care has to show love at all times. And this is where also communication comes in. Most times um, the prophet is in demand in the family, in the church, even, you know, from people he doesn't know most times. So you have to be able to communicate to your wife what is going on. I'm not saying divulge, there's confidentiality, not divulge what is, you know, what is being the spiritual Probably discussions and, and revelations. Yes, no, no. But she has to know, I'm with Miss A, I'm with Mrs. B for, the, for a, a purpose. So that if somebody comes to tell her that, oh, you know, do you know I saw a uh, daddy with so, so, and so, she has the confidence that, yes, I know. Thank you very much. He told mm -hmm. me. Wisdom. Communication is very important. Communication is very, very important. 
you have to constantly discuss your movement with your wife and vice versa. Because usually in the office of a prophet, trust is a major issue. Trust. Because we know by default, the pro uh, prophetic office, you know, is demanding. And sometimes you don't know who is who, you don't know who is calling. Hmm. And sometimes when, you know, you're talking to the person, a little touch, it doesn't mean to go canal. A little touch to the wife makes her feel, okay, I'm coming, I'm with you. Just let me attend to this. You have to have a code to make her feel loved, hmm. to make her feel secured in the, in the marriage. Because most times when there's problem due to the prophetic office of the husband is because there's an issue of trust, there's an issue of security. As we know, people of all walks of life come to the prophet. And sometimes, or most times, they may be more beautiful, more mm. elegant, more sophisticated than your wife. So how do you make your wife feel confident, feel secured in the relationship? You have to have a code. It doesn't mean you're carnal. Mm. You have to have a code. Sometimes if people come up to you, they greet you, it's nice to also introduce just in case they don't know. And even if they know, a little hug, a little embrace and say, ah, uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, um, mommy or darling, baby, this is um, Mrs. So -so and so or Mrs. So -so and so that I was telling you about. That little honor, that respect makes the, um, Helps it goes a long way. Marriage. It goes a long way. It holds the marriage. Because no matter how elegant or sophisticated the other woman is, because your husband has equally accorded you respect, and respect begets respect. Mm. Because he's accorded you that respect, you also, you know, without thinking, you also, you know, have to reciprocate that respect to him. Oh, yes, darling, you did say that, sir. You know, the, and the way you address, you know, your, your husband or your wife publicly, there has to be respect. There has to be respect because if there's none, then all the people around, we feel that, you know, she's not important or he's not important in the case if the woman is a prophetess. Mm. As we read about Deborah in the Bible, it was not only male prophets, you know, we did read, she, she did have a husband, even though, you know, his name was not mentioned. She did have a husband. So it is possible because some people have this um, idea, there's a cliche that you, a, a, a prophetess cannot keep a home. A prophetess can keep a home. Mm -hmm. As long as there's communication, as long as there's respect and honor, As long as you're willing to help each other financially, not make it one-sided. Mm -hmm. If for instance, is the wife that is, you know, footing most of the uh, bill, there's nothing wrong if sometimes the husband, when he's got the time on his way, oh, what did you say you want to cook? Or oh, I'll, okay, I'll get the things on the way for you. Or I'll even prep it for you. And sometimes, you know, he might even be a better cook. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong in, you know, helping to cook. Little, little sacrifices. Little sacrifice. There's nothing wrong in running the bath. You have to keep the spice in your marriage. That's the only way that the office of the prophet will not affect you. The time you spend in the house has to be quality time. You have to make every minute count. Even if it's three hours, it has to it, matter. It has to matter. You pray together. You share your day together. 
Don't say, oh, because I'm a prophet, my office is more important. So I don't care about what my wife have done. It has to be about me. No, you have to be selfless. Mm. You have to be interested. How was your day? Well, you do look a bit tired. You have to take interest in how she looks. Mm. Because sometimes, and like vice versa, because sometimes the, the, the husband, who is the prophet, for instance, or the wife, is rushing. You have to take a second look and say, look, uh, baby, I think, you know, you should, you should, this goes more. Take an interest. Don't let it be like, here he goes again. Yes, mm. here he goes again. But take an interest in him as well. You have to create me time for yourselves. Whereby if you've got children, look, this is our, our time. Once the children are in bed, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you might not necessarily go out or you are home, you know, make it count. What film would you like to watch? What music would you like to listen to? Make it count, make it count. There has to be time where you actually put that phone on silence. Hmm. Put that phone on silence, no distraction. It's just about both of you. Because we cannot deny that the office of the prophet is demanding. But having said that, you have to create time. Time management is very, very important. When you are home, be at home, hmm. not just in body, but in mind, spirit, and soul. And this can be difficult, but what I always advise is, please put that, if you don't want to put off the phone completely, put it on silent and keep it away. It is possible. The office of the prophet shouldn't be so overwhelming that you don't have time for your wife, mm -hmm. that you don't have time for your children. When I was reading in 1 Samuel about um, Eli, when um, prophet Eli's uh, children, you know, were acting like vagabonds and his life got cut short because of that. I looked at him, he wasn't a bad man because if he was a bad father, he wouldn't have been able to um, mentor Samuel. Mm, 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 mm. But what probably happened is that he got so occupied with doing God's work. And probably he won them a few times and he just got tired of it. Now we can't afford to do that. A lady was saying to me the other day that she discovered when she was in higher institution, that all those of the all the members of the K guides were children of prophets, mm. children of pastors, deaconess, deacons, and they turned all the songs from the church into. And you ask what happened, what went wrong, and you'll be surprised that nine out of ten times, I'm not saying all cases, but most of the cases are because we get so engrossed, we get so overwhelmed with doing God's work that very little time is given to the family. Very little time is given to the psychological, emotional need of the family. We just think, okay, or is, you know, everything is about money. It's not all about money. It's not all about money. Money is important, like I mentioned earlier, but it's not all about money. And one other thing is, you know, like, like people don't like talking about it, sex. Mm. Most times it is felt that um, is, is defiling. It makes you unholy. Mm. I think, as a prophet, if you're not interested in sex, you have no business marrying. 
Thank you, ma. You have no business marrying because a lot of um, problems, you know, in the marriages is because the man or the prophet or prophetess is so engrossed with doing God's work, so to speak, that time is not given to the physical need of the partner. I'm not saying that um, there, there'll be times you're exhausted. Yes, but you also have to give time. It can't be all the time. Mm -mm. I can't be tired all the time. I can't be spiritual 24 seven. It's a lie, man. It's not possible. It's not possible because if sex is absent, if it's not regular in a marriage, because of being spiritual, gradually, you know, you are creating, you know. A vacuum. A vacuum, a gulf. Hmm. So start minding that gap. The gap will become a gulf. It will become overwhelming till both parties become disinterested because if one keeps on asking and every time there's one excuse or the other, I'm tired. I have mm -hmm. to travel tomorrow to so so and so place. You know this administration. That 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 that. It gets to a time. The other party will not ask anymore. And um, I also say, you know, it's important in the marriage not to be presumptuous. The fact that he's tired. Why can't you give a massage? Mm -hmm. Why can't you do a hot bath? You know, why can't you say, look, let us both get into the bathroom together. Do things that will make, you know, that will help. Yes, when one is exhausted, sometimes you don't think of anything, not because you want to deny your partner, but because you're just tired. Hmm. So it is a duty of the partner to also look for ways to tantalize to inspire, to motivate. There's nothing wrong in having a massage. There's nothing wrong in doing a hot bath. There's nothing wrong in going to the bathroom and say, I want to wash your back. Mm -hmm. Look for subtle ways. Because sometimes I find that because of our culture, most women, they feel that the man has to always make the move. Mm -hmm. And that is wrong. A man also wants to feel, you know, you, you want me. They want to feel that you 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 miss that aspect of the marriage. So as a prophet, it's important that you give time to fulfill the physical needs of your wife. And as a prophetess, it is also important that you create that time as well. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you, thank you so much. God bless. I know if I leave you alone, another one hour. Because you are not looking at any notes now. You are downloading from the Rema. <laughs> God bless you, really good man. <laughs> okay, it's time for questions, suggestions, addition, contribution. Wow, tonight is a wonderful, fantastic, numberistic night. I see lots of people in the house. God bless you all for joining. A lot of prophets, a lot of big men of God and women of God. Wow, to God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Please, uh, prophetess has said so, so much, so much, so much. And if possible, if we can even listen to it after this program, listen to it, to it again and again and again, because there's a lot of instruction in Bible, Dini. There's a lot of, you know, examples and um, what's it called, advice. You know, it looks like those little, little things, but they go a long, long way. Is there any question in the house, any submission from what you have seen or what you are experiencing? It's an open forum. If you need help or advice, even, is this is the forum. Let's come out with it. While I'm waiting for people to raise their hand, I'm going to ask one question, and I'm going to throw it to the house and to my prophetess, Toyin. And that is on the point of infidelity. Yes. 
which I believe is one of the major problems yes. that is affecting the prophet's office or even marriages generally. And um, they always say this thing that if every prophet either have one of these three problems. One is either maritally uh, or financially or the third one is anger management problem. That if you do not say a prophet that's dealing with anger issues, then check that prophet's marriage or they, are, they have problem with money, 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 money. Okay, if I'm, all, I'm looking at the marital part, part of it. Is there any other reasons why you see find a lot of prophets or prophetesses who are not satisfied with the one wife or the one husband God has given them, but you find them in, is it promiscuous activities? Is that the right word? Yes. Is there any reason why we have that so rampant amongst us? Yes, they, that, that is why I talked about sex. Mm. A lot of times, um, you know, especially we Africans, and I will say, you know, Nigerians, I'm sorry to say that, but it's the truth. We feel that once we are married, then we shouldn't take care of ourselves. I will say that we should start with ourselves. There's a picture a man saw of the wife when he married her in the first place. Yes, it's possible to add a bit of weight and all that, but first of all, start with yourself. Take good care of yourself. If I'm with my husband and I see the kind of people he gives a second look or he comments and tells me that, ah, that person looks good. Instead of getting angry and jealous, I'll look at that person to see what I can gain, what I can learn and adjust myself as well. Hmm. Is it the way the person spoke? Is it the way the person dressed? Is it the nice perfume that enthused that, you know, animated out of that person when you walk, she walked past? Is it the dress code, you know, the combination? Hmm. We are, we are quick to judge the man, but I will say that we should start with ourselves, but how can we improve ourselves? Hmm. Because there's a picture, how did I look when you first approached me? Hmm. And how am I looking now? We know that age, you know, with age, things change and things like, but it shouldn't stop, you know, how, we, you know, take care of ourselves. How are we keeping the home? When he comes to the house, is he constantly complaining that the place is untidy? Hmm. Have you made the bed appealing? Did you change the bed sheets? Did you try and make it a bit more exotic? Mm -hmm. So I will say, you know, I'm not saying that um, that's the only reason, but I'm saying sometimes it's not the way we attack it spiritually that it's a witch or a wizard or, you know, or sometimes we ourselves, it's just little things that we need to change. Is it the way you speak to him? Hmm. Do you make him feel honored? Do you make him feel important? Is it because he's bringing less money now? You now talk down at him hmm. or you just serve him his food like a dog? Have you thought about sometimes saying that, okay, let me, it's my turn. Let me take you out on a date. Mm. Let's do it like we used to do in the past. Let's go watch a film. Let's do something different instead of, you know, the monotony of, yeah, daddy, kabosa, welcome, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we sit down and the next thing we go to bed and, um, you know, have you asked him what he would like to experiment? Mm -hmm. because if he's going out and someone is giving him you know the full works i'm sorry to say i'm not saying he's right but you you know we want to keep the marriage let's spice it up everything is not about money so if the person to feels, buttress what you're saying prophetess yes, yes. um i'm not going to mention the name of the shepherd I think it was on a Mother's Day. 
Yes. And he was exhorting the woman that what need to do and what happens that yes. as a shepherd, a lot of when a woman brings food to them, they if the dish in which they bring the food alone, exactly you understand? it's interesting. The exactly. packaging of the food that's before it. you even open the food, you know, they feel honored. That's they feel it. Treated like king. You know, the packaging that comes with the food and the gifts. Like, okay, all right. And then before you now open the food, the aura, the aroma that comes out. So there's so many temptation that they go through. Yes. You know, so uh, even, even at that, it's still not, I'm not excusing it. It's not a good excuse. But like you said, that we also should check inside we, as a woman. We have to, yes. But even it's not even just on, on, the, on the male side. We have even as female prophets and prophets yes. yes. who are very promiscuous as well. Yes. So what do we say is the reason behind that? Is it just, is there something about the spirits world without into and out? Is there more to it? There is more to it. The devil is look, roaming, going up and down, through and through, among the children of God, looking for who to devour. <laughs> The main thing is prayers. Hmm. You have to pray together. You have to pray at all times. Pray without ceasing. Cover your marriage with the blood of Jesus. It's very, very important because sometimes, no matter how you try, you know, the, the, I always say one thing, the devil looks at your weakness mm, mm. and prays on it. So it's important for us to know our weakness. Be honest to yourself. Be know honest your to yourself. Know your strength and weakness. We all have it. No one is perfect, except we want to deceive ourselves. No one is perfect. So it's, the important thing is to know your strength and your weakness. And also, don't be far from your husband. Don't be far from your wife. Don't get so engrossed in, oh, I'm a prophet, and therefore, you know, I'm getting all this attention, and then you don't give your wife attention. Mm. I you think another it. thing I believe it's very cogent is this self-discipline. We can talk about witches, wizard, or somebody, uh, a woman came dressed naked and then I lost it. It's, it talks a lot about who you are yourself. Exactly. You know, if, if people will bring anything to you, but do, of course, you, you don't have to buy everything. There will, look, when Jesus taught us how to pray, he said, we have to pray, deliver us from temptation. Hmm. So even God knows that there will always be temptation. When he taught us the Lord's prayer. Mm -hmm. So we have to pray. That's the master key. There's nothing like, oh, we've been married for so X number of years. There's no big deal. There is big deal. I've seen a man of 80 plus saying he wants to divorce. And the question is, what is he looking for? Oh, no. Yes. Are you serious? It is. So regardless of age, status, it's important to cover your marriage continually with the blood of Jesus. Do not underestimate the power of prayers. Hmm. We have to pray without ceasing. Christian, mighty, oh, why see me? me. Christians do not rest. Do not rest. We tend to take things of each other for granted. That's why some people become careless with their cleanliness and with their dressing and with the, you know, taking care of the house. Or even looking after the man. And no. Thank you very much, ma'am. I'm not seeing any hand up. 
Um, Obi says, thanks for joining. I just saw so you just joining. And thanks for joining. And he says, yes, self-discipline is the most important factor as a prophet or a prophetess. I don't see any hands up for any question before prophet Tony runs away. Let's bombard her with question now. Don't call me after. Or, 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 or if anyone wants to contribute. Yes, it might, not, it might not be a question. From I experience think... or anything. We have like 10 minutes to go. Anyone that wants to contribute, please. Okay, while we are seeing, thinking about it, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. And how do I put it? Now, every individual, I don't know, do I say, let me say what I know. I'm a Nigerian, I'm proper African woman, I know you Igbo. And where we come from, not that we put too much emphasis on spiritualism, but it is there, whether we like it or not. And even um, the Europeans and other parts of the world, they understand and recognize spiritualism. And even our youth, they call it, some of them call it black, uh, is it evil eyes? Yeah, they call it evil eyes. Like when you talk about witches, wizard, or negative energy, most of them call it evil eyes. We know it is there. Now, from each family, we also understand the fact there are generational problems yes. and envy. Some people might envy you, and because of that, they project negative energies on you that might affect your marriage. Either you're a prophet or a prophetess or not. That is also on one side. And then we also have the issues of paradventure. You didn't listen to the Lord properly yourself before you got into the relationship. Or maybe you're looking at the wrong thing. You're looking at the beauty in the outward. You're not looking at the beauty in the inward. And you're a mismatch. And at the end of the day, your relationship is having challenges. That is also on another side. So I'm looking at different scenarios why a prophet or prophetess have problems in their marriages, even with all that you have said. I want to go a little bit deeper into the realm. And that I mentioned it briefly. Could it also be because of uh, the, the, the office the Lord has placed us? In the instance where you reveal secrets in the inner realm to people, this is the, the problem you are having, and this is the solution. And people, the enemy have tied down. And you go there with all your boldness and power and begin to unloose people from shackles and chains and the Lord using you to direct people's lives, direct affairs and all that. It's it's mega. And then the devil said, eh, is it you that can see? So you are the one that can say, you are the one that can find solution for them. We will afflict or affect your whole. They know they cannot kill you, you know? So I, I believe sometimes they, they, they prey on the weaker vessel, if I may use that word. Yeah. There will always be that open door. And then the moment you call, you open a little door, then the devil just creeps into the family. And that is why what you keep hammering on is very important, which is praying together. It's praying. Because when you one person is weak and you pray together, you sharpen each other, you strengthen each other. But could it also be that is because of the things we bring from the spirit realm into the physical, and then sometimes residue follow us. Yes. Uh, you understand what I mean by residue? I do, I do, I do, I do. You go into the realm yes. and then you come out, yes. but you, you are not the only one that's come out. Yes. And you, you don't even yes. know, probably you're not sensitive enough to understand yes. you didn't come out of that realm alone. Yes. And there are what I call some demons or evil spirit. Yes. Because when the yes. Holy Spirit is on one side, the devil is there trying to oh, attack, yes. trying to block. So you come out of out of that realm, but you're not coming out of the realm alone. Yes. And then the moment you come out of that realm, you have not sanctified your, your area, you have not covered your family. And then there is a lot of doors open. And then the yes. devil says, like, okay, ah, I've I've I know where I can enter into that. And then the start of I don't know if what I'm saying makes any sense. It, it makes sabling and just it, it, no, no, no. It makes it makes sense. And the only way is prayer, like um. Anytime I'm given the grace to prophesy, I don't take it for granted and just go home like that. You know, 
you, you need to also go on your knees. Thank God for the grace he's given you to speak his words mm. and cover yourself with the blood of Jesus and cover your children with the blood of Jesus because what you've done is deliverance. Mm -hmm. So you don't take it for granted. And that is why it's important to also create time to fast. You know, we cannot love our food or love our physical needs more than the spiritual. There has to be a balance. And that's where your fasting comes in. That's where your prayers comes in. That's where your own me time, even with your partner of doing vigil. If your partner is not very strong in terms of um, fasting, it can compensate with doing vigil with you. And it could also mean the fasting could, might not be food, it could just be the denial of mm -hmm. yourself for that period. But you have to do it together. Remember, there's power in numbers. Fasting. And he has to understand, and you pray together against these forces. Mm. Look, light and darkness cannot coexist. No matter how powerful the darkness is, Psalm 24 makes us to understand that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Every power belongs to God. And we are just clay. The Lord is the potter. So the clay, they cannot ask the potter, how did you make me? So which means that God's power supersedes any form of, you know, any other power. Thank so you, you have so to draw much. on that. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to, I've got one hand up and that is my, thank you for joining mommy. No, no, no. She's been struggling to join you for 30 minutes. And well, it's, thank you, ma. Yeah, you finally been able to come on. Um, Minister John Olufemi Ajayi, my own portable. Please unmute yourself and fire on, sir. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so very much, uh, my dear woman of God. Uh, thanks for the invite. I, it's um, a bit on the high side for me tonight because of time constraints. Mm. And I Thank you for joining. It was short notice. Yes. Um, <laughs> I won't be long. But I, I thank God for the life of the woman of God. Uh, God bless uh, Kenya Adeniji. God bless you, woman of God, for Amen. great things you are doing, at least to, glory. Uh, to advance your calling in this direction. Like I've, I've often said over time, that the idea of ministry is beyond the fivefold ministry, as it mm. were. There are extensions to ministry as far as the things of the Lord is concerned. But tonight, I've got a very limited amount of time because I could even do to dash out now into another program in Canada. But the idea of um, marriage with the prophetic is not a theme that can be dealt with under just one hour. It's a series. It is. It falls into dimensions and it falls into parts, as it were. But the only reason why I have to come up and say something is that uh, I need to honor the woman of God and speak at least to, to some extent. The idea of marriage initially is as a result of the things that marriage is a, a medium that God used to communicate with man. Marriage is a medium that God used to rendezvous to have relationship with man. So after men have lost, or after man have lost that relationship, a divorce took place between God and man in the Garden of Eden. Mm. And man was driven out of his husband's house, which is the Lord. Are we together? Yes, sir. So moving on, man, as it were, a man and a woman, both of them are two dimensions of God. When you look at a, woman, a man and a woman, both are two dimensions of God. That's the reason why marriage is invalid in heaven. 
marriage is the things of the world. But moving on, how are the prophetic affects the marriage? It's a very huge question hmm. that can only just be dealt with within the, the space of time that we have. But the Bible says, unless the Lord builds the house, the builder is building in vain. And unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen, they are watching in vain. Hmm. The Bible says, woe is he unto him that wakes up in the morning to end his daily bread. It is unto the Lord that give bread to his beloved when they are yet asleep. What am I saying? No matter what you do as a man, no matter what you do as a woman, it is, the, it is in the hands of the Lord for that marriage to take place, to hold firm till the end of time. What am I saying is that in whatever capacity you see yourself, let us establish the fact that who is a prophet? Who are you as a prophet? Are you, have you come to the prophetic office as an idea or as, a, as, as, an, as an aspiration, as a wishful thinking? Are, you, are we part of those people that have just come into the church and enjoying the euphoria of the prophetic? And because we can pick one or two things up, we have tagged ourselves to be a prophet. So those are the things that we really need to establish first. Then we can move on, as it were. Because, you know, uh, one of the, in the fivefold ministry, the only ministry that has been there from the inception of the world is the prophetic office. From the beginning, in fact, Jesus was even referred to the prophet of the prophets. Mm. Why? Because the prophetic, by the reason of the prophetic, was the world formed. By the reason of the prophetic, was sure. all those things that, that are not are called to be what they are. So there are many things that looms around the prophetic office. Very, very huge. So now, a typical prophet, a typical prophet, or a prophetess, or a prophet, or working in a prophetic office. It has a lot of um, 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 daunting uh, uh, duties over their heads. And based on that note, uh, expectations are very high. So not until when you are able to align yourself with the purpose and the reason God has given unto you, even when all those, uh, uh, um, the unforeseen circumstances come to you, that is when you will be able, by God's grace, to do uh, uh, away with the things that you believe is a threat to who you are, to what you have, and to how God wants you to be. So that is the reason why I said the issue of, to, uh, of the prophetic affecting the uh, marriage is a very, very huge subject and which I believe cannot be finished just in a program like this. It has to be serious. If if you can permit me, woman of God, to say okay, this. sir. Because uh, even we are good. already going over our time. So uh, yeah. if I have one or two more agreements on that, we will also treat it next week, and not leave that a gap be, so that, that we can go a bit deeper into it. That would be that would be that would be that would, that would be so nice, uh, woman okay, of God. Sir. That would be so nice because um, we we cannot we cannot deal with it here. Finish it now. Mm -mm. okay, Let us please. Yes, but I go think, with Blake. I think Mommy Nunoya wants to say something. Yeah, before Mommy Nunoya comes up, she's going to round up. Um, Big Chief, if you can unmute yourself, sir. I'm just agreeing. I'm not saying something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Big Mommy. Chief, Thank sir. You. So, have a, have, a, have a, you know, have a wonderful day and time. Thank you so much, my prophets. Tony, God bless you, man, for that very Thank submission. <laughs> that was good. Thank you, thank you for coming at short notice. I, I, I'm okay. highly honored. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. My yeah. big chief, sir, you have Hello? the floor for another two minutes. Hello? You have the floor, sir. We can hear you. Okay, good evening. I just wanted to say something. Uh, I, I've listened for a while. I agree with what uh, this last caller said, Mr. John. You know, so I identify who the prophet is first because the first thing is, the prophet has to know who he is, that mm. he is a prophet. Because if he does not identify who he is as a prophet, he will destroy many lives. Mm. Both the life of his partner. Mm. It becomes a danger to the partner. 
You understand? And, it's, it's not, and the office is so sensitive that you cannot just wake up and say, I'm a prophet, because people mm -hmm. will put their hope in your hand. The, your word will have power, meaning mm. to this. So you must know yourself. Mm. That is one. Two, it is not accurately, pro accurately perfect for the prophet to know exactly who he is because there's confusion in the matter. Too. Sometimes it's confused and it's moving. Now, if you're marrying a prophet, you have to be ready to marry a prophet too. Are you ready to follow this man in his confusion? Because mm. I've heard the saying, I've looked at the platform, I've seen there are many females, and the females you understand what a man is. The man himself is a bundle of confusion. <laughs> can you can you understand him in the confusion? I'll give an example of a prophet, so I won't go too far. Moses. Moses lived as royalty, I believe, because this most of uh, the conversation is coming from the Christian side. I could bring it from the Quran side too, if you want. So Moses left royalty in Egypt. So he's royalty for almost 80 years. When you say royalty, it's just like Prince William. He knows what royalty is. He knows what honor is. He knows what dishonor is. He's a learned man in his own right. And he went to Jethro, I think, and he married Zephora. Mm -hmm. Zephora from the fact that Jethro had sheep and the seven daughters were taking care of sheep. That means there's enough sheep. That is well. Now, in our days, we we'll call her Ajebota, if the Nigerian there. So the Nigerians understand what Ajebota is. That woman was an Ajebota woman. Moses brought his confusion to her life. <laughs> he married her, they had a son, they were living peacefully. All of a sudden, Moses came and said he spoke to a bush. Which woman would he tell today that he spoke to a bush that she was living with him? So the women now, too, are not ready. They just throw shots at the men. And most times, our fathers, they think of our fathers. They always keep quiet because they know you don't have the capacity to understand what you're supposed to say. Hmm. Now, you pack this woman from our Jebota home, Jethro home, she's the first daughter of Jethro, and tell her that you're going to Goshen. That is Goshen is a Jebule in Egypt. And the woman follows. Now, you go and tell Pharaoh, it's not telling her that you're going to tell Pharaoh to tell, let my people go and say stupidity. You're struggling with that. The man bring rock and say you are going to circumcise. I think you're cutting foreskin or whatever from their son. Which woman will allow that now? So we are just saying, and we are not ready to marry prophet. Mm. On top of that, the Moses will disappear. 40 days, 40 nights is on the mountain. And we are talking about physical needs. Because the man knows there is war. He was trained in the palace like a soldier. So his job, there is war. If I, I will follow this matter to the end. So the woman was suffering also. These days, if you go and buy to go and say, the woman will call your phone, text your phone, where are you? So this man is going for this. The, the father of the woman has to beg Moses, Moses, please, when you come down, spend some time with the family, let her as the judging case. Then the serious cases will come to you. What I'm trying to say is that there's responsibility in everything. Mm. If you marry a prophet, it comes with responsibility. If the man is a prophet, it comes with responsibility. And we must have accountability. If you marry a prophet, you cannot be living like another woman that is in Kadesha. You pay the price of prophet's wife. You cannot look at another woman, just like what we are suffering now, African women are looking at European women. That means the African men will ever fail. They will never get it right. Because the African man will never be an European man. The last one, I'll end with this. This matters is okay. When we, uh, the, uh, Madam Toyin was talking, she talked about uh, finance. It's one thing we don't pay attention to too much. Some of the men wake up in the morning and they leave the house, they don't even know if they can bring bread back. And they go and face criticism. When they come back and he wants him to be physical with his wife, a man's body doesn't work like that. It looks like he's lacking. Then he's sleeping with his wife. Can you speak a bit louder, sir? It looks like he's lacking mm. in provision. Then he expects him to sleep well. You cannot, men cannot fake it. Women can fake it. If it's not working, it's not working. If the generator doesn't come on, it doesn't come on. There's no faking in that one. Women can fake it even if she doesn't feel it. 
So you see what I'm saying? So sometimes it's good to study what a man is as a cause before one shot is thrown. Because if you want to go and work for a company, they have their job description. You cannot go and tell them that you that is the employee, you tell them when you want to go leave and you don't want to go leave and how they will do their job. They will keep, they'll fire you. That is what brings the infidelity in home. The man is looking at this one does not meet the job description. And some men don't even get smiles. Three months, not even, I don't, I'm not saying talk work. Talk is another issue. Smile, just smile in the house. Then the girl in the office is smiling. Every girl, girl, girl. Um, big chief, sir. Because of our time, we've gone 40 minutes overboard already. Next it's week, okay. you it's if okay. you're gonna be here next week, then we'll um apparently we're gonna do it for another two weeks so okay. that we can all learn from each other and experience. So we're gonna extend it to next week, Thursday, by God's grace. And oh. um it's it's also let us also try because i'm getting some comments being sent to me to focus on the topic for each day because when we want to talk about marriage we cannot talk about it completely so mm. but on each topic let's all try to stay in that box mm. so that we'll be able to learn more concerning the topic for the day um and i think that will be all for tonight mommy no no do you have any last word for 10 seconds God bless you, really good, ma. Um, wow. Big Chief, thanks for joining. I don't know if your sister Adaura. Adaura is definitely female. Thanks for joining, ma. Uh, Mommy Ninoya, thanks for joining. I have Ada Ugo. Jennifer, thanks for joining, ma. Obi, thanks for joining. My beautiful prophet, Estonia Yuba. Oh, thank, thank you, you for joining. And your submission you. was beautiful. Gently, you. you were just unveiling the onions and it was peppering our eyes. Thanks for joining, ma. Um, Ade Remy Peters, Antonia Yemi, thank you. Sister Betty Chidi, thanks for joining. Sister Christine, uh, let me read one or two comments from Facebook if I can find it all. Thanks for joining, Mommy Keshinro. She's been on Facebook all day. And Dami Lola Ogumake, I'll see you. Um, Desborn, that's Krista Christine Dalmeda. She said, many marriages are destroyed by prophets by not discerning the type of spirit speaking to them. Okay, that's another level, which is true. And which is why it's also, one has to be really sensitive. It's, it's that's another topic entirely, entirely for another day. Wow, it's been a wonderful, wonderful night. Who have I not mentioned their name? For all the people that have joined on Facebook, thank you so much. If I can't see your name because you did not comment, I salute you. Bible discussion group, thanks for joining. Mommy Toye, thanks for all you, you brought in a load, lots of people. I see your handwork. Thank you, Ivan. My okay. able brother, Damola, okay, thanks for joining. Go, is it Google or Google? Google Picel. <laughs> Picel 6A, thanks for joining. Sister Mary, I see you. Ah, my Abu Olusha, Michael, Fama Kenwa, thanks for joining, sir. Obi, thanks for joining. Ogo Sele, thanks for joining, sir, I believe. I'm not sure if it's female or male. No, it's a female. Female, thanks for joining, ma. Um, Ola Oluwa, thanks for joining, ma, if I'm sure if female or female. Just pardon me. Either you're male or female, you're a ghost child. And my beautiful sister, Vivi, iPhone. She's been with us even before we started. She was on board. Thanks for joining. I believe you also learned something. And when you join in, I was speaking to somebody on the phone. That's for Sister Vivi. Somebody was ministering to you that um, that lady that I'm just talking to now, that she needs a lot of mercy. So I don't know if everyone in the house, we can just have an agreement prayer for Sister Vivi, iPhone 6. So we don't know how, but God knows her. For Sister Vivi, in every area she needs mercy, that the Lord will meet her at the point of her need. Can we just agree with her for one minute and pray for Sister Vivi, please? Father, we thank you for Sister Vivi who's joined our program tonight. And in every area she's looking for mercy. Jehovah, I pray that you stretch forth your hand of mercy upon her 
and meet her at every point of her needs in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you give her reason to smile, give her reason to testify. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you so much. It's been a beautiful night. It's been a wonderful night. I don't know how I can express it more. Next week, Thursday, come with more fire. Come with more question. Come with more ready. Eh? And then we're going to fire on. And I believe, um, I think I have two people who really want to speak next week. And that is uh, Prophet Femi and Jai and Big Chief. So by the time they finish landing, there'll be more that will carry over again. So if there anybody have more questions or anything, please let's bring it up next week, Thursday, concerning the prophetic office and marriage. How do we manage it? And then somebody also sent me a message that which we're going to treat next week. And that is how come a lot of prophets are still single? They are not married. What is stopping them from getting married? We'll look at all that next week. Until next week, sleep tight, stay blessed, stay strong. And I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. God bless you all.